Hey, so I'm going to just show you really quickly, basic, what to do with the existing sketches and dimensions. So this is what my template looks like. So over here, you'll see I've set up a bunch of different um, to floor plans and whatnot. They don't apply to every project because, you know, like here shows upper floor plan where the project may only be single level. And um, so you can adjust accordingly, but this is uh, the template. So setting up the existing, because we don't have a survey and we're just going off of our dimensions, I'm gonna just start with the walls. Usually I would start with the site. I like to start with foundation and kind of build up the project, how you would build it in construction. But since we don't have that information, we just have our dimensions, I'm going to start with the walls. So the important thing to look out for is where you start that drawing. So this automatically is on main floor plan existing. That's where I wanna be. And the reason for that is because of the phasing. So if you scroll down in the properties under phasing at the end, it'll say what phase it's in, existing demo, or I'm sorry, existing or uh, new construction. And we want to do existing since we are drawing what is existing. So say I came into floor plan proposed, here would be new construction. So anything that I would draw in here would show as new construction. So you wanna come in here for existing, and I'm gonna start with my wall, which is WA or you can come up to architecture and wall. And I have done some pre, um, I've, I've pre-programmed in some of the most basic walls that we work with. Um, if you remember, we measured and the wall came out to be five inches. So what that's telling me is it's likely two by four stud wall with half inch jib board on either side. So I have right here two by four frame wall with five eighths inch jib board. I'm sorry, that's exterior, interior. <laughs> three, uh, three and a half inch wood framing, which is two by four with a double half inch jib board. So that's what we wanna do. Double is because it's on both sides. Single is it's just on one side with bare studs on the other. And you can always verify that by Click, clicking edit, and here you'll see what that structure is made of. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna do my double, and I'm just gonna basically start somewhere. I usually try to start with like the entry door just to create order. And what I'm gonna do is, so up here, I'm gonna make sure that I'm going up to the next plate. So we're on the main floor. I'm going to go up to the upper top plate. No, upper top of sub floor. Main top of plate. So the main top of plate. Um, so since we're doing, since we took the measurements, we're basically measuring interior to interior. So I'm actually going to do finish face interior. And I'm gonna show you how to verify the dimensions and put on the, the um, dimension line so that you're verifying that you're actually using the right dimensions because in the beginning, I kind of try to do a little rough. So I'm not using the actual floor plan to do this exercise. I'm just gonna do it kind of rough so let's just say we start with the entry. Whew. Let's do zoom in. And we'd go three feet. And then we, I'm just, like I said, I'm just gonna kind of.
Okay, so we have our rough layout. Again, it's just totally made up, but a couple of things with now dimensions. So we're gonna start dimensioning it so that we can verify those dimensions that we just did based on our drawings. Here's the thing, when you come in here, you can dimension, here you can change it. You can do wall center lines, wall faces, center of core, faces of core. For normal dimensions for construction documents, I always dimension from the face of the core. So basically the face of the stud because it is important for the framers to be laying it out. Those dimensions are basically the most important for the foundation guys and the framers. And the framers usually pull lines on the studs. So for them, it makes more sense to do your dimensions on faces of core. But for this purpose, obviously, because we were dimensioning from face of um, finish, we're going to do the wall faces. And I'm going to come through here and I'm just going to add in my dimensions. I'm going to, again, make sure you're going to that face of the core. Okay, now, you know, that looks great and it should be what you set it up to be. But what I will do, especially for existing, because existing is static, it's not gonna change. So say um, this, for example, is supposed to be three feet. I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna come and, you know, this, this dimension will sh pop up just showing the center lines. Ignore them, they're just placeholders basically. So I'm going to come through here. I'm going to click on there. I'm going to do a three feet. And then here's the key part is now I'm going to lock this dimension because I know that's three feet. I don't want to get it moved. So this obviously turned out really clean. An existing uh, floor plan won't necessarily turn out that clean. Um, there might be kind of like weird fractions in certain area and um, it'll obviously be more complicated. And so that's especially why I want to do three because say um, this, for example, say this is showing up like this, but my dimensions that I have based on my um, site visit shows that this should be 10. And I know that this is three. Well, I'm going to then do that 10 and say I maybe didn't have this dimension or something and lock that. And then I know that that's going to be that dimension because, or here's another good example. Say this is 10, this is three. I don't necessarily have this dimension, but I maybe have this dimension. And I know that that's not seven. I know that that's not 17 feet. I'm going to come through here. I know it's 17 feet, six inches. I'm going to do that. And what that does is that a lot that adjusts this without moving these. And that's really critical for doing existing drawings. So now I'm the numbers that I know for sure, that's what I'm going to lock. So I'm going to come through here and I'm actually going to lock the key existing pieces of what I know it is. Now I'm going to do basically the same thing for windows and doors. I'm going to add those in, dimension them in key places, like from a wall to the edge of the window or however you took dimensions. And then um, I'm going to lock those dimensions so that they aren't moved because you can accidentally sometimes like scoot something over or adjust a dimension and it throws off another dimension and you might not know it. And then it can throw off the entire set of construction documents, especially when you're working on a remodel, which obviously this is what is most important for. So Windows WN, 
Um, you're going to come over here and these are basically your typical whatever it's going to be. If the window or uh, the type or the size are not in here, you can always adjust the size or load a new window, uh, of course. Um, let's see. You know what? I'm on the wrong one. Forget it. I'll, if you don't know how to load a window, I can show you that later or um, do a Google search. It's pretty easy. But say you do have, like I said, most of the types are in here. So say you have a uh, double hung window and you have a three, a 4040. And this is a 3040. I'm going to come here, edit. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to do 4040. I'm gonna I'm gonna take off these muttons because most windows don't have muttons anymore. Some do. Okay, here I'm gonna change that to four since I did 4040. Press OK. Okay, so I have a window here. Maybe I have two here, and then I have a door DR. All under architecture. I'm I'm gonna say the codes when I'm doing it, which it's always good to know the codes, but um, yeah, most of the center architecture. So door, I'm going to have an entry door, which is likely a 3068. I'm going to throw that here. And that'll kind of usually lock in a center position, kind of, but we're going to verify that, of course. Okay, so say we've got that. Now we want to do the same thing. So say we measured this to the frame, not the casing, because obviously casing goes outside of that. So we're going to measure to the frame. And these little dimensions, um, and you're actually going to see, I was going to say these little dimensions you can hide or whatever, they're not going to be important for existing. But also in construction documents, I don't really ever use just an existing plan. This is more so just for modeling. So we got that. And then I'm going to say, oh, I knew that this was two inches or three inches off of here. It's not centered for whatever reason. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. You know what? For some reason, these windows get a little funky and don't let you adjust. And I'm not sure why I need to look that up, but you can just adjust, which is kind of annoying, but say it's one six, this one's four zero. Oh. this one's four zero. Oh. Yeah, I think it's something about this specific window type, which is a new window type that I've been using. They're nice because you can change the muttons and stuff or the um, divided lights, but it is kind of annoying. See, like that's how it should be, is where you click on this and you should be able to click that. Okay, again, I should have done it while I was doing it, but sometimes I forget, and then I always just come back through, and I lock it. Okay, there was something I was just going to say about that. Oh, I was going to say, so then you have this. Now, on the demo plan, when you click over here, ah, now you have all this information that pops up. Um, I have on my template just pre-done items like this, which you can always hide if you want during it. But so now we have this. When we come through, and I can we can do this later, but um, I'll do this on another tutorial. But when you come through and you demo, you always want to demo it. So you actually come here and you're saying phase demolished. I'm demolishing it in the new construction. That way in the demo plan, it's shown as demo. In the proposed plan, it's shown as new. So that's super important. But that is pretty much it for just setting up real rough the existing floor plan layout. And then we can take it from there to do foundation, site, roofing, and the rest. Let me know if you have any questions.